Hello and welcome to Cherry's Red Army, an opportunity for me to do a bit of a reaction. It was Thursday, transfer deadline day, January transfer window closed, done. And we also had a game against West Ham at the London Stadium, which would be 1-1. So reaction to both of them. And I also have the Cherry's Overseas Reactions coming for you later on. Do subscribe to our channel as we edge ever closer to 2,000 subscribers and smash the like button. Use those comments. Lots to talk about in this video. The January transfer window is closed. Bill Foley said at the start of the window that we wouldn't be that busy and we weren't really. Two incomings, more going through the exit door. Let's focus on the outgoings initially. Some really good opportunity for some of our academy players. Daniel Ad Adeji has gone off on loan to Leighton Orient. You've got Owen Bevan, who's gone to Hibernian on loan. Exactly the same scenario there for Emiliano Marcondes. And Nathan Mariah Welsh is also signed for Hibernian undisclosed. Let's go through some of the main squad players then. Hammer Traore, a guy that come with big potential, big fee in the summer. Well, he's on loan for the second half of the season at Napoli and probably likely to sign for them or another club permanently in the summer. Hasn't quite worked for Traore. Has the skill. Doesn't quite adapt to a style that Andoni Iriola needs and he has had to struggle with some illness as well. So good luck to Troy Ray in Serie A, somewhere he's quite comfortable, previously played, so we'll see how he gets on. But am I surprised? Not really. He's not had many minutes at all. Joe Rothwell signed for Southampton in the Championship. Joe Rothwell did start against West Ham the opening day of the season. He was at fault for that goal that Bowen scored. And Joe Rothwell really struggled for minutes as well. Didn't even get on at all in the FA Cup at Loftus Road. That meant for me that he was probably going to leave on loan in January. And that's happened up the M27. He's a very, very talented footballer. He's more of a counter-attacking player. He's played a lot deeper for us last season and at parts this season but a player that does need to get some minutes. He's still got a half-decent contract. If he can have a good second half of the season, I, I would predict that we're going to cash in on Joe Rothwell in the summer. We signed him for a free, but a good player should do very well in the championship in a side that is doing very well in a promotion push at the moment. David Brooks has followed Joe Rothwell through that loan exit door, and that is one that sort of hurts a little bit. It hurts a little bit, but I understand it from David's point of view. David's had a struggling season. Again, not really adapted to the Andoni Iriola philosophy and style. Really struggled for minutes. Had a poor day in the first half at Loftus Road against QPR. But he did have a very good day as captain against Swansea. Swansea side that blow hot and cold, but he did get in a goal. He did get assists. And maybe that just gave a little bit of thinking to Andoni. David Brooks then probably would have walked back in the building at the start of the week and said, look, am I playing more football? And, and Donny just can't guarantee that. And I totally get it from his point of view as well. So David probably didn't get the answers he wanted. So that meant that if there was interest, he wanted to listen to it. And the minute he heard that Southampton were interested, again, perfect location for him. Doesn't have to move. He's going to go into a side that are in very, very good form. They're on a promotion push. They're going to win a few matches. So David Brooks, this this plays all into his game. So why wouldn't he go there? It's just annoying that we are effectively helping a side up the road. If they do come back to the Premier League, Southampton, I mean, it is three points at their ground, isn't it? So we just need to look at it how you want to look at it. But for David, on a personal level, I hope he does really well and he has a good second half of the season. And I hope he gets some football because he really deserves it. He's had a poor illness that he's had to deal with. And, and he's recovered well and he needs to play football. For his mental health, for for his own stimulation, he needs to play football. So good luck to David. You don't have to go up and be promoted. You will come back and be a born player, but good luck to you for the second half of the season. So movement on final day would be Kiefer Moore potentially going out on loan. Again, that was something that was subject with the potential DACA deal back in the summer. This time there were there was many interests from championship clubs regarding Keith Moore, and that would only happen if we brought a striker in. And that those wheels and cogs would start to turn because we were sort of working out a deal in Spain. So Kiefer Moore did go out on loan to Ipswich. Ipswich are fighting for promotion themselves. They're having a very, very good season and maybe they just need that extra little bit to get over the line. And Ipswich fans, if you're watching this, 
I'll tell you what Keith Moore can do is he can give you that extra little bit. He is absolutely in his element in the championship. Get him in confidence, get balls in the box. He will score goals against championship football teams. And if it stops Southampton or Leeds or upsets their rhythm of a promotion push, I'm here for it. Keith Moore, thank you so much for everything you've done. You were fantastic in our promotion push at the end in the championship. You got us over the line. You scored that goal against Forest. You got us back in the game at Swansea. You had some goals in the Premier League last year. Really struggled with the management changes we had. But I hope you do have a positive season. Massive respect to you, Keith, for more. You've been a bit of a cult hero for us in that championship success. And I really hope you have a good second half of the season. So good luck to Ipswich and Keith for more. And that would mean that if Kiefer Moore was leaving and we were running out of strikers behind Dom Solanke, something was going to happen. Well, something did happen. But before I talk about the main guy that came in, let's talk about a young goalkeeper, Callum McKenna from Queen's Park. Young, young Scottish goalkeeper, got lots of potential. £300,000 initially with potential rises up to a million. The last time we did that and got a goalkeeper in very, very similar ilk, was Aaron Ramsdale and that didn't work out too bad did it Aaron done okay I know we got relegated with him in the sticks but he was player of the season and he ended up still going on and now playing for Arsenal Callan if you look at some of his stuff on YouTube he dominates the goal quite well he looks pretty comfortable with his feet I reckon he could grow in that area a little bit but a good shot stopper looks to palm a lot away from dangerous areas so a lot of potential there and some big teams were in for him apparently so that so the fact that we've got him is is a very very good sign but we did need something quite massive and that was a backup to Dom if Dom gets injured what were we going to do Kiefer Moore tried his best but didn't quite fit the style maybe in Enos you now does because Andoni Iriola does know about you now from his time in the league and not playing for Andoni Iriola, but playing against him. But let's go back and see where you now has fitted into this moment because he was born in Turkey, he does have international appearances, but he does know the UK. He signed for Manchester City a few seasons ago, had some loans out, and then a permanent move to Villarreal for £11 million. Don't think it quite went to plan because he then had a few more loans out from Villarreal before permanently signing for Getafe for £8 million. And then he found his feet. Two seasons ago, he had double figures in contributions. And last season, some very, very impressive stats for him. Some lots of double figure figures goals, good assists, mostly with his right foot, a few with his left, has scored a header. And Bournemouth fans can score a direct free kick because we don't have many of them. Junior Stanislav back in the championship got us a few. Joe Rothwell got us a free kick goal, sort of, in the Carabao Cup. But you now can strike a dead ball. So, all good, right? We finally got a striker that can play back up. Maybe that someone can come on and play alongside Dom. Knows Andoni Iriola, can speak English. Andoni Iriola's happy. So we got nothing to worry about. We're all okay now. We're going to have a great second half of the season. Well, there is sort of a curveball coming in, right? He has had a bad injury. So at the back end of last season, he picked up an ACL tear. ACL, Callum Wilson. We know what sort of injuries we have have seen in Bournemouth shirts, but this was for Getafe. And he's only recently started playing football again back in December 2023. So this season, he's only played about four or five games in all competitions. No goals yet. Some assists. But Andoni Iriola is comfortable that he's recovered well. He got through the medical. And it's one of them. You just have to trust the process. You have to trust that the club have got this right. It's hopefully just one of those injuries he's had. He'll recover well. He'll be absolutely fine. There is an increased risk here that he could have a setback. And if that happens, yeah, then there are going to be comments. You can't dispute it. There will be comments if he has a setback. But let's be optimistic. Let's hope you now can settle very quickly. I'm hoping he's in the squad for Forest on Sunday. And let's hope he has no repeat of the injury he had and he can thrive. And then there might be an obligation, I think, for us to buy him permanently in the summer. So hopefully this is a win-win all round. And I do trust Andoni Iriola. And I don't think the club would have taken a risk if there was even a slight concern that the recovery or the operation, anything he would have had, didn't go to plan. So there will be comments if there is a setback. 
but hopefully we've got you now from here until the end of the season. So that's us. That's our squad now for the second half of the season as we chase down 38, 40 points. We might not need that. And then obviously the cup run where, where how far, can, how deep can we go in the FA Cup? So get your, get your thoughts in the comments around the January transfer window. Are you happy? Did you want a little bit more? Maybe there's a comment. There's a conversation around left back. Lloyd Kelly, if he stays fit. Kirk has hopefully back fit now. Dango Tara can do a job there, but I understand there could be a conversation at left back. Get those thoughts in the comments on the January transfer window. So as a club, we're trying to sort out the You Now medical and deal. And Doni Iriola and the team had a job to do at the London Stadium. Earlier on in the season, opening day, it was 1-1. We had to come back for a Dom Solanke goal to get our first Premier League point of the season. Going into this game, though, West Ham weren't. They're in a great place in the league. Like They're doing really well. They're sick. The West Ham fans not particularly enjoying the football, but they were letting players go out on transfer deadline day themselves. Ben Rama's gone. But they do have a very, very good squad. They had signed Calvin Phillips a, a week or so ago. Bowen, we know, is a good player. James Ward-Prowse from Southampton's doing work very well for them. Kudos is a threat. So they have got good players in their team, but they were there to be had. When you looked at the bench they had on the night, we had the stronger bench. So if we were going to impact this game, it was going to be tight. You felt like if there was going to be a winner, we were going to be the team with the stronger bench to impact that. But it was all about how we can approach this fixture. Last season, we were we were poor, so poor on the night. There was a VAR controversy, but so poor on the night. And we had to have a better night under Andoni Iriola. We had to start well. I mean, first of all, what I do want to talk about in summarisation of, of this 1-1 is the momentum bar. This shows how effective we were in the game, how proactive we were. And, and how dominant we were at stages. And we were very dominant in that early stage. That early stage would be the moment where we scored very, very early on through Dom Solanke. An assist from Calvin Phillips. Ring rusty. Yes, he was. To be fair, Zuma absolutely done him with a poor pass. But then he also had a poor pass back to the goalkeeper. And Dom Solanke had an easy chance to slide past Ariola. So a great start for us, Cherries, to go 1-0 up. And I thought we were we were very good in that first Half. I, I like the way we approached the fixture. I like the intent. I liked how we were turning the ball over. And it was all about how clinical we could be in that first half. The lineup was pretty good. It had Alex Scott in a position that I wanted him. Adam Smith was at right back. Lloyd Kelly was at left back. It was not far away, potentially, from our, our best eleven our best 11. It meant you got Clivert on the bench. It meant you got Sinny and Billing on the bench. But wow, what players to bring off on, shall I say, if you need them. There is a criticism in that first half is that we didn't go 2-0 in at halftime, 2-0 up. We so should. And Antoine Semenya in training today, if, we're, if they're having training today, will be sitting there knowing he should have scored. A great chance for Antoine Semenya. Back from the AFCON, slid through. Did he have too much time? I'm not sure. I mean, Ariola shouldn't have had a chance. He made a save. But Semenyo, it, it's point blank. He should be doing better. Semenyo scored some cracking goals for us this season, but he should be scoring that. And you go 2-0 up, you almost think, we've done it. You know, we've absolutely done it. There are another 45 minutes of football to come. But we've played so well and we just needed to go 2-0 up. And I think that would have killed West Ham. The fact that it was only 1-0, they would come out. It would unlikely be that poor again in the second half. And they only need maybe one chance. The one chance would be from the penalty spot. Am I disappointed that we gave away a penalty? Yes, I am. Lloyd Kelly did did well on the night, I think. He did. I mean, look, let's be fair. Lloyd Kelly's been out injured again for a spell. So coming back in, starting where we needed him to start up against Kudus. But the penalty that was given away he will be disappointed with. He he fell for the dummy movement, first of all. Once Kudos got the wrong side of him, you're asking Lloyd not to put his arm on him. He does that. Then he gets clumsy with his, with his feet and he trips him from behind. And if it's the other end, I'm, I'm wanting a penalty. It's a penalty. Lloyd Kelly completely got that whole motion of movement wrong. And I think he was frustrated that Kudos got round him. And then he just had a, a quick moment of madness wasn't even madness, but he knows that he, if he'd gone back in time, maybe he just lets him get away and hopefully Senesi recovers the situation or the next defender saves it. But um, it would lead to a penalty. It was a penalty. James Ward-Prowse 
is a very good dead ball specialist. He did score a penalty, I think, against Sheffield United. He went down the middle. I did wonder if he'd go down the middle again. It would be mind games between him and Neto. And he did go down the middle. And you could see Neto was frustrated because Neto would have known this. They do their homework. So Neto, I think, was thinking, do I stay? No. What's the chances he's going to go down the middle again? But he did. And I think Neto, I think Neto thought about standing still. And he went to his right and it went down the middle. That would make the game finally balanced because West Ham were getting confidence a little bit. Did I feel like we we're in danger of losing the game? No. Changes came into the game. Sinistera, Cliver. It was good to see Roman Fave come on to make his debut as he's returned from the club early after a loan spell at Lorient. But I don't think there was really a strong chance for each team to win this game. But we were always going to have the better squad in the second half if Andoni got those changes right and we kept the approach right. And I think overall, we still tried to tick away, but the game sort of fizzled out and it would finish 1-1. So is it positive? Let's put it in perspective. They're sixth in the Premier League. No matter whether their football's good or not, they're sixth in the Premier League and they do have good players, especially in midfield. And I would have taken a score draw at the start of the night. It's another point on the board. We've now got 26. So, yes, I think it is a positive point. You can always look back as the game unravels and go, we should have got three. Were West Ham there to get three? Yes, West Ham were there to get three. Should we have buried the game before half time? Yes, we should have buried the game before half time. So I'm absolutely understanding any Bournemouth fan that sits there and go, we should have got three points. We should have got three points. But am I happy that we got a point on the road at, at the London Stadium? Yes, I am. It's a very, very good point when you put it in perspective. I think most of the squad, most of the players can be happy with their performance, the approach, the intent. Marcus Tavernier, I think, can do a little bit more at the moment. You know, he's he's a player I always speak highly of. I think on his day, when he's really in the mood, he, he is a massive threat for us. I think he's adaptable. He can play many positions. The reason Tavernier stays on this pitch when you think he should come off, he should come off, is because Andoni can adapt Tavernier in lots of positions. He can take corners. He can be progressive. He can sit and play like a win-back role if we need to do that. This is why Tavernier gives you so many options, and this is why he will always stay on over Antoine Semenya, who is a goal threat, but very one-dimensional at times. I mean, Semenya can play over the other side, but he is what he is. He's a winger, he's direct, he'll go at full-backs and he'll get shots away. But Tavernier gives you more tactical options, so he's always likely to stay on the pitch. But Tavernier looks angry at the moment. I don't know why. He, he looks like he's beating himself up through minor things, minor pass, minor touch of poor touch of the ball, and, he, and he's beating himself up. And I don't have an issue with players getting angry, but get angry in the right way. Get angry, go and score a goal. Get angry and, I don't know, put some aggression into a tackle. But Tavernier just needs to find a better place in his head at the moment. It's just what I'm seeing. It's just what I'm physically seeing when I watch Tavernier inside Dean Court, when I watched the game on TV last night. And I and I just want a little bit more from him at the moment because I feel like this mentality that he potentially has in this beat sort of, built up frustration is going to turn negatively for him very, very soon. And I don't want that to happen because I think for £10 million, we've really secured a really good player that massively helped us stay up last season. We just need to find a happy Tavernier. So, Marcus, hopefully you can get back in the mood. I still expect you to be in this side on Sunday against Nottingham Forest, but I just want to see a happy Tavernier back because you are a fantastic footballer. But overall, really, I'm positive with the point. And we now go into two games that are winnable, home to Forest. we got to absolutely back ourselves to get the three points in that one. We've then got Fulham away from home, and I'd like three there, to be fair, at Craven Cottage. I think Fulham are no well-beaters. I think they've just signed Armand Brozier, but yeah, they're, they're up and down at the moment. They won't get relegated, but I definitely fancy us to go and get something at Fulham. I mean, six from six would be lovely. And then we can really focus on on driving home this cup run and see how deep we can go into the FA Cup. But a real opportunity to chase down the next two fixtures. Before we close out this video, then, thank you to James and Justin from the States who have given us some overseas Cherries match reactions. Here they are. 
What's going on, Cherries fans? JP here from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, over in the United States. Busy transfer day. We had a big match against West Ham midweek. All eyes against us. Uh, it ends 1-1, just like it did at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, at home to start the campaign this year. Uh, this time we led and conceded kind of the opposite of, of what happened last time. We dropped the points. But hey, all in all, fair result, I feel. So first half, I thought was all us. We got on the front foot early with a goal three minutes in with new boy for West Ham, Callum Phillips. Took a lazy pass from Kurt Zuma and Dom Solanke decided to put it in the back of the net. Feeling great after that. Three minutes in, already up one nothing. It's awesome. I think we controlled the rest of that half. You know, we were on the front foot, dominant breaks from the back, breaks from the midfield. Um, and honestly, should have went up 2-0. Uh, Semenyo had a golden opportunity to put us up, and I believe it was the 35th minute, um, which all in all took away the three points from us at the end. But uh, yeah, can't really dwell on that. Um, come towards the end of the half, though, West Ham started to fight back and, and fire back. And, you know, honestly, that, that first half whistle... Came at a really good time. Uh, I think that, you know, it, we were getting tired, needed to regroup in the changing room and kind of come back out fresh in the second half. Came back out in the second half. I thought we we played and started, you know, very well again, just like we did at the beginning of the match. Um, up until, you know, our, our, our favorite, you know, nemesis VAR kind of came and reared its ugly head when Lloyd Kelly kind of clumsily, you know, tripped tripped the, the West Ham player. Um, hmm. Borderline call, I would say at best, you know, um, West Ham fans may say different, but uh, I think it was a borderline call at best, just a kind of clash of legs and and you know, VAR, you know, when it goes to VAR, it never ends well. So they converted their 1-1, which is, again, how, how it ends. Um, you know, after that 61st minute, I feel like it was a pretty even game. Up until then, for the first 60 minutes, I think we controlled it. We were the better team. And, and honestly, I think we could have came away with all three points. But I think it's all in all a fair result, uh, how it ends 1-1. Take two points out of West Ham in the season. I think at the beginning of the season, if you would have told me that's what was going to happen, I would have said I'm all for it. And I think a lot of fans would as well. Um, but our recent, you know, run and our recent form, man, I think we could have got three out of them. Positives today, I think, was our midfield between Scott, Christie, and, and Lewis Cook were outstanding, um, leading the breaks, leading the charge there. I thought the Solanke Semenyo connection was great as well. Um, I was a little unsure how that was going to work, but I thought those two played well, and I thought Semenyo should have got the full ninety. I understand he just came off came off Afcon. But I think he could have went the full 90, and I wanted to see how that would have went. Negatives, obviously finishing, I think, um, you know, with Semenyo there and some other opportunities we had. Um, the Kelly injury, we'll see what that is. I think he's fine, but, you know, hopefully that's not a negative there for the rest of the season and the, and the run-in. Um, but look, um, let's keep the momentum going. Our squad is our squad now. Transfer deadline's done, dusted. We have the players that we're going to have for the run-in. Let's keep this rolling. Um, I appreciate the time, guys. Thanks for listening, and up the cherries. Well, we've just got done watching a one-all draw um, away at West Ham. Um, and I think every Bournemouth's fan um, initially should be, we should have won that game. At the end of the season, if you take a look at it, you'll be like, you know what, a point is fine, but that was a game crying out for us to take three points and we didn't do that and that's one of our weaknesses that we've had all season is we are just not clinical we don't know how to take our chances um we brought it to them and they didn't have a good performance um and we we got punished because we couldn't put the ball in the back of the net to be quite fair to you Semenyo has to score one of those he had two or three Grade A chances that he didn't put in. Um, going over to the other wing, I thought Tavernier looked really poor today. Very, very poor. In the first half, I don't know if there was even a time where he got the ball where he didn't get dispossessed. Like, he should have come off at halftime. Sinistera needs to start every game on the wing, in my opinion. Um, 
I thought Kelly tried, I think he did the best that he could. Obviously, sometime, sometimes he got overrun by Kudis. And obviously, that one mistake um, was the reason that we drew the game. I didn't think West Ham looked like scoring at all this game, aside from that penalty, um, which is unfortunate. But, um, you know, we have a point out of it, and we have two very winnable fixtures coming up. Um, good to see uh, Fave um, coming in to get his debut with Bournemouth. Um, Kiefer Moore's was not on the bench, so he's gone already. Um, I didn't, I thought Christine Cook also looked a little bit off the pace in terms of their decision making. So, um, not a terrible performance, but one we really should have picked three points up on. There we have it then. Just wanted to do a little video as the January transfer window closed and that match reaction from West Ham. Please do support the channel. We are so close to 2,000 subscribers. Do smash that subscribe button. Hit, do hit the notification bell. Do also hit the like button. Really appreciate it. Hit the like button and get yourself in those comments. Anything about the window, anything about the West Ham game, get them in there. And we'll be back very soon to talk more Premier League football here on Cherry's Red Army. Until the next one, see you soon. Up, Cherries.